Hi, I'm Maeve from Grass Tech's primary design department and today we're going to be talking a bit about TAM schemes. So with me here today is Julie Roach, JR Agri Consulting. Okay. okay, so Julie, can you tell us about the current TAM schemes that people have been familiar with? Okay, so the um, current TAMs that's there at the moment is there since 2015. And I suppose over the last number of years, people have been applying for, you know, cubicle sheds like the one behind us, milking parlours, milking machines, bull tanks. And there's a, there's a huge amount of items that were on the TAMs. Then you have the low emission slurry spreading equipment, which was in a tranche of its own. So I suppose the one thing is, is that we're coming to the end of the, the TAMs as we know it now. Um, the last tranche is closing that we know anyway is on the yeah. 16th of December. There may be another tranche into early next year, but there is nothing guaranteed yet. So I, what I would say that if, if anybody wants to apply or had anything in their head that they would like to apply for, they should they should be you know, making, making progress now and doing an application. So that deadline then is the 16th of December yes. and you need to have, uh, if, the, if it is a project where you need planning permission, uh, you have to have your pl final grant got before the 16th before you apply. That's right, yeah. You have to have the second letter got. So I suppose if anybody is thinking about doing a building um, and they haven't applied for planning, that's not going to be a runner now at this stage. So it would be really things like, um, you know, dairy equipment such as bull tanks, maybe milky machines, um, the low emission slurry spreading equipment, any mobile equipment, but any, any structure that would require planning at this stage and you haven't got your planning or you're not even in the process of made the application to your local authority, unfortunately you won't be an applicant in the 16th of December tranche. Oh yeah. And then for uh, the new TAM scheme that we think is coming next year, do we have any details yet about that? Um, I suppose the only thing that we know for sure is that there is going to be a new solar solar funded grant and um, that was announced in the budget by the Minister of Agriculture and there's going to be a separate tranche for that so it's going to be a 90,000 euro tranche for farmers to erect solar panels um, on their farm. The one thing at the moment though which is the same as the existing solar is that you can't feed back to the grid. If you get granted okay. under TAMS you're not permitted to feed back to the grid. You can use the energy that you create on your own farm and as well for your own dwelling house in the farm. But there, there isn't any change on that as of yet, so we just have to wait and see what will happen wait next year. And um, is there anything that we do expect to be in uh, next year's TAMs, or can we speculate a bit? Um, I suppose we hope as well that um, you know a lot of the items that are on the existing TAMs will continue to be there. Um, I suppose there was a few items that, that aren't on the existing TAMs, such as um, underpasses, which I suppose would be something that a lot of dairy farmers in particular would like to see coming in. For a lot of people, it's, it's the last stage of their expansion. They may have built um, a new cubicle house, they may have put in the milking parlour, and they may have used up their threshold. And I suppose there will be a new threshold in the next and the next times. So it, it would be fantastic if something like that did come in. Um, yeah, so we just have to go and wait and see, but it will be into, well into the middle of next year by the looks of it before something will be, be before announced. Before anything yeah. definite is yeah. announced. Um, so other than uh, buildings and capital projects, is there other things included in the TAMS? In the next year's TAMS? Yeah. Well, it's, it's anticipated and it's hoped as well that um, a new, the heat detection system for cows, you know, with the collars will be, will be on the grant system. So that would be a welcome, a welcome addition as welcome well. Welcome addition. Um, is there anything that c farmers can do in the meantime then to, in preparation for the, the next time scheme yeah i suppose if you were if you definitely had it in your head that you were going to be doing some um, putting in new infrastructure on the farm um, in the next year or so or coming years and you were going to be eligible to avail of a, of a grant i would definitely say go ahead and, and make make a start on your planning permission because planning permission can take a bit of time and at least then when the grant does open well you're you're in a position to apply there's not there's not much point in waiting and then when you see the grant opening because as well as that there's no point in rushing your plans you know and rushing the layout of whatever it is you're going to do so people do have time now in advance of the grants coming out next year you know yeah absolutely and i suppose that's something we would say from grass tech side as well when we do design and planning that while the planning process takes approximately three months like your design stage beforehand a bit of time needs to go into that and also if there is any issues that come back from the council or if they look for further information which does happen very regularly particularly with underpasses um, then it's, it's important to get it in in lots of time yeah exactly um, 
Just one thing then in relation to slurry storage. So if you are compliant with your slurry storage, uh, there should be no issue with you applying for TAMS grants. But what happens then if you're, if you're not compliant or you're short in storage? Yeah, the rule currently at the moment is if you apply for, um, for any housing or slurry storage um, infrastructure as part of the TAMS grant and you currently are not in compliance with the slurry storage requirements, you're not eligible for the grant. You know, and that, that, that has always been the case and I would imagine it's going to continue that way. So, um, like it's disappointing obviously for people that, you know, they want to actually add additional slurry storage on their farm and, and they're not compliant. But it, it, it's just the way, it's just the rule, it's, it's just the way that it is unfortunately, yeah. So is there an option there for farmers to maybe look at putting in additional slurry storage to make themselves compliant? And then um, if, they, if there's further projects they want to do in the farm, apply for grants on them? Yeah, they can do that obviously. If they do invest in the farm and put in additional slurry storage, then that would be fine. I, I suppose other farmers, what they have done is they would actually have rented slurry storage um, facilities off their own farm, which is allowed. Um, once they have evidence and proof that it is there and the details of that of that rented facility goes in on their application that's also sufficient yeah okay so Julie can you tell us then um, if you're an individual farmer or if you're thinking of going into setting up up a partnership is there benefits to that when it comes to applying for times grants yeah there is if you register the partnership with the Department of Agriculture um, you can avail really of um, double the threshold that's in the current time scheme so for example at the moment um, a farmer on their own right can avail of a 40% grant if they're a non-young farmer and if they're a young farmer a 60% grant on the first 80,000 spend. So if they go into a partnership then, if you have a partnership for say example with a, a, a young farmer and a non-young farmer, the, the maximum threshold they can use up is 160,000 and then they can avail of um, an 80,000 euro grant on that. And also then obviously if you have two young farmers, they can avail of 60% each if they're both in a partnership. So there's definitely advantages of being in a partnership, but I think it's worth bearing in mind as well that it's a Department of Agriculture registered partnership now, not just a joint herd number, which sometimes people can be a little bit disappointed. They go into a joint herd number and then they go and apply for TAMS to realise that they can only avail actually of the one threshold, which is the okay. 80,000. So there's, there is a little bit of a difference. So you need yeah. to officially set up your, your partnership? It needs to be registered with the Department of Agriculture. Like, I'm not saying that other, par other joint ventures and other partnerships aren't partnerships because they are, but just for, from the TAMS side of things, it has to be registered, registered. with the Department of Agriculture, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Right.